I'm Jim Ruff. Uh, I work for the Northwest Power and Conservation Council in Portland, Oregon, and we're here at Willamette Park along the banks of the Willamette River. The council is an interstate agency of the states of Idaho, Montana, Oregon, and Washington, and is charged by the Northwest Power Act uh, of 1980 with preparing a plan to assure the region an adequate, efficient, economical, and reliable power supply system while also protecting, mitigating, and enhancing the fish and wildlife resources of the Columbia River Basin. The Council asked its Independent Economic Analysis Board to prepare a report on the potential economic impacts of a quagga or zebra mussel infestation in the Columbia River Basin. This occurred in uh, 2010. The Council was interested in the potential biological and economic impacts of an infestation because of the potential damage to the hydropower system, which supplies about three quarters of the electricity uh, in the region, plus impacts to fish, wildlife, and related ecosystems of the basin. So the council is an interstate body uh, representing the states of Idaho, Oregon, Montana, and Washington. Uh, and was formed uh, by the Northwest Power Act in 1980 and charged with developing an energy plan for the Pacific Northwest as well as a fish and wildlife program to protect, mitigate, and enhance the fish and wildlife resources. In 2010, the Council asked its Independent Economic Advisory Panel to evaluate the economic impacts of a quagga or zebra mussel infestation in the Columbia River Basin. Well, the council was interested in the potential biological and economic impacts uh, of a mussel infestation if they were uh, to develop somewhere in the waters of the Columbia. Uh, they actually did a worst case analysis of an infestation starting in the Upper Snake River. Uh, and of course, if they were started in the Upper Snake, the villagers or the larva would float downstream into the lower Snake River and possibly then into the lower Columbia River. The report found that the annual costs of cleaning cooling intakes and water intakes at the federal hydropower dams uh, was on the order of about $16 million uh, with another $5 million estimated for the non-federal dams on the Snake and Columbia Rivers. The study also showed that replacing the water intakes at 20 uh, fish hatcheries in the Columbia River Basin that take their water from surface water would cost about $1 million each. Uh, could be about $3 million a year if you replace them sequentially uh, with another $1 million in operations and maintenance exp expense each year. And since we're here at a boat launch on the Willamette River, the report estimated the costs to clean uh, marinas, docks, uh, boating facilities along the rivers, uh, along the Columbian Snake River, could be as high as about $50 million per year, with costs that could go in the tens to hundreds of millions of dollars. The report also found that the cost, that there would be increased juvenile and adult fish passage mortality. The cost for replacing fish bypass facilities, both upstream and downstream, could be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. The report also found there could be loss of power generation at the hydropower projects, as well as lost revenues if mussels uh, were, were to come into the basin. Finally, the report found that the impacts to native species uh, could be significant in the form of loss of habitat and competition and impacts with the food web. These costs weren't estimated precisely, but could be in the tens to hundreds of millions of dollars annually. So the report estimated the cost for the Columbia River Basin could be substantially higher than the costs associated with mussel infestation in the Colorado River Basin, primarily because of the impacts to the fish passage facilities, as well as hydropower production. The IEAB's report concluded there was great benefit to the region for delaying an infestation in the Columbia River Basin for the following reasons. First, 
A delay would allow the region to gather important scientific data and information associated with an infestation in the Columbia River Basin. Second, the annual benefit uh, in terms of cost savings of a delay to the region is huge. Third, a delay would allow the region to do advanced planning and permitting necessary to control an infestation if the mussels were to get here. The bottom line is the delay, every year that we delay an infestation buys the region time to prepare for the event should it occur. The study concluded that a delay or prevention of a mussel infestation would reap the region huge savings, huge annual cost savings of all the costs that I just talked about. Uh, so every year that the region can delay or prevent an infestation of zebra or quagga mussels uh, is a year that we've saved money. The council has a section in its uh, recently enacted 2009 Columbia River Basin Fish and Wildlife Program that addresses the effects of non-native species, and in particular, zebra and quagga mussels, which are a top priority. As a result of that, the Council has invited various experts, both in the region and from other regions in the country, to testify before the Council at its open public meetings around the region to testify as to the effects of quagga zebra mussels and their costs and prevention methods. The Council is also working with congressional staff on the importance of preventing a mussel infestation in the Columbia River Basin. The Council is also an active participant with its regional partners, including the Corps of Engineers, Bonneville Power Administration, the Bureau of Reclamation, the state and federal fish and wildlife agencies, uh, Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission and others in preventing uh, the spread of quagga and zebra mussels in the Columbia River Basin.